means. Let's make the best emoji we can. So we've brought our, our screen grab into Photoshop or into Photo P, and we're starting to layer shapes on top, just like you see in the demo. I have four shapes now, one of which I just started for the hand. So how do I get the hands color? I double click within the icon and then I can use the targeter to give me that hand shape. How can I add other shapes to it? You'll notice, unlike in Photoshop where there is a rounded rectangle, there is no rounded rectangle here, but there is in custom shapes. So I'll go to custom shapes, find the solid filled in rounded rectangle is right there and build one of those one of those fingers will come in as a new shape right and then control T will allow me to angle it and size it more closely match what I'm trying to. About right there. And then to get the rounded tip, I can just use an ellipse. Maybe even a perfect circle. Pull down shift. So now I have this finger shape created with three shapes of the same color. A big circle, a little circle, and a rounded rectangle. Your task for this is to never rasterize. Keep these always as vectors. Otherwise, it's not going to scale up correctly. But if I want to duplicate multiple shapes at once, like both of these shapes that make the finger, I can select both layers and then hit Command J, and it will duplicate both of them. Then I can use the Move tool, and I can move that duplicate finger over to be the next finger. Then I can do the same thing. There's, I still have both selected. I can hit Command J, duplicate them again for the next finger. Again, we're trying to keep it kind of simple. Vectors are often most effective when they are simple. And then the last. I'm trying to line it up so that the, the edge of the finger runs smoothly into the, the big palm circle I already have. Like so. That looks pretty good. Now the more difficult one is this, but I'm going to try to duplicate them again, move them over. But this time, control T, and I can actually distort multiple layers together. Hit return, control T. Often, when it's something like this that's kind of symmetrical, I want to line it up vertical, then hit return, and then control T again so that I can stretch it wider or thinner and then rotate it. Then hit return. It doesn't quite work there, so let me 
I can extend my palm as a bigger oval, but I can also just adjust my placement of my thumb, which I think will work. So we don't need to match it exactly. You get to make a lot of the decisions about what's going to look best. And then if it's just a little bit off, you know what layers they belong to. And you can use your move tool and the arrow keys on your keyboard come on, to nudge it and get it to line up. Okay, now that I've created a few layers, I definitely want to save my work. So I go to File, Save as PSD. A very important step. Because we're doing something browser-based, this is what I've created so far. These are all my vector shapes, which means they are scalable. But I don't want to lose them. I want to have them. So I save it as a PSD. It's going to automatically save it to my downloads. You can see it there. But it's going to have the name of my original screen grab. So I want to rename it. This is an important step when using PhotoP. It's just, I'm going to rename it with my name and then a description of what the project is. So I called it Carl Exercise 2 Speak Emoji. Now I'm going to move that PSD file, that's the only file I need, because it contains everything, into my assignment folder. All right, then I can close my downloads. Now I'm going to close. Photo P, leave it. I can close Emoji Maker, don't need that anymore. And then I'm going to reopen Photo P. And I'm going to open from my computer the PSD that I just saved. Now that is so that when I want to save it in the future now, all I have to do is say File Save. It will ask me if I want to save changes, and then it will automatically update in my folder to reflect those changes instead of downloading more and more copies into my Downloads folder. All right, let's continue. Now I've got the eyes those kind of details. The one thing I've noticed with PhotoP, you can hear me clicking and clicking, is that it can be tough to turn the eyeballs off. But that's that can be very handy. Now, what if I want all of this hand to be one shape? I don't want to merge all of these shapes together because that would rasterize them. But what I can do is I can group them all together. And to do that, you click on this little folder icon that's at the bottom of your layers. And when I click that, it will create a new folder, which is a place you can organize layers together. And because I had those shapes selected, it puts them all into the folder, which makes it so I can turn off the hand all at once. It also means that I can move the hand all together just as though I selected all those shapes. So that becomes very handy. Haha, <laughs> no pun intended.
So if I wanted the hand a little bit lower, which I think I do, covering the mouth, I can do that. I can even rotate it using Control T. All right. But for right now, I'm going to turn that off. I just want to see the eyes. So I'll turn off some of these other things that are in the way. So simple to do the oval eyes with just the ellipse tool. Use the move tool, move them a little bit. And you control T to widen them a little bit. Again, I'm you can customize it, but I, I want to start by just matching what I made in that custom emoji maker site. Okay, let's match the color. It's this brown. I don't love the brown, but it's a good place to start. And now I want to put the other one in. So I'm going to duplicate Command J. I'm sure you're getting a sense now of how much repetition there is in learning digital art. We're never going to do something just once. Okay, good. Now I need something that works as that crescent, you know, arc underneath the eye. I have this shape. It's not quite the crescent I want, though I do kind of like it as some sort of head wrap. So I can look at my custom tools or my custom shapes. See if there's something I can modify or use. Maybe just something as simple as this, a little minus sign. That's one option, let's see. Because I can always warp it and put a curve into it. The thing about vector shapes is you can't delete from them. There actually is a water droplet, but I, I like what I did. You can't delete from them without rasterizing them. So we layer things up, but we don't want to delete. So I am going to use that minus sign, just that simple bar that's slightly rounded at the edges. You just build it. And then let me do Control T, which you can always find under Edit and Transform, or Free Transform. And then I am going to warp it. I'll zoom in so you can see this. That gives me the little chicken wire. And I can start pushing it up. Without measurement guides and things, it's hard to get this perfect. But that's why I want you to struggle with it a little bit. Because even though I am warping it, it is staying a vector shape, which means I can change its resolution and size, and it will be perfectly clean. Hold down Shift, get a perfect circle. Oops. Use the Move tool, make it a little bit bigger with Control T. Hold down Shift so it stays circular, doesn't stretch out. 